Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I am doing my review of Dark Places by Jillian Flynn. Dark Places follows our main character Libby, who when she was seven years old, her family was actually brutally murdered and she survived um, the massacre and testified against her brother as being the killer of her mother and two sisters. So 25 years later, we're now following a grown up Libby who is very much still very traumatized from the murders um, when she was a little girl and has been living off of pretty much donations from people who heard about her story and um, kind of donated to her and never has worked a day in her life and she's now running out of money. And so to make money, this Kill Society approaches her and is interested in learning more about what happened that night and believes her brother is innocent. So she decides to help them uncover facts about that night that she never knew for a price. So basically that covers the whole summary of the book. So we start off with following Libby and her perspective as she's kind of going through and trying to solve the mystery of what happened that night that her family was murdered um, and decide whether or not it truly was her brother like she originally thought it was. Then you've also got two other perspectives in the book that follow her mother's perspective, um, kind of leading up to that murder starting in the morning of that day. And then also the brother's perspective. Um, same thing, we're following him as a 15 year old on that day of the family's murder and kind of following him through that whole day and finding out what really happened um, to him. So, Basically how I structure my reviews now is I'm going to go through and talk first about the plot and some things I liked and didn't like and then the characters and then wrapping it up. So plot overall, I would say that it was probably a three out of five stars. Um, the thing I wasn't crazy about for this particular story, we actually find out the details of the murders very early on in the book. It's told through some sort of like dream sequence that Libby has um, and she recalls all the details of what she remembers from the night of the murders which pretty much gives away everything that's going to occur um, at the end of this book when the climax kind of finally happens. And so for me that kind of gave away a lot of the shock value of the book. I would say the scariest part of this book was the very beginning because you're finding out those gruesome details. That kind of takes away from the shock value at the very end of the book. So even though we do get a great twist at the end that I didn't see coming, the shock value of it was definitely diminished because we knew those details that Libby had recalled so much earlier in the book already. I really enjoyed following the three different perspectives and figuring out why those particular three were so very important to the story. Um, and I don't want to say too much, but there's a reason that Jillian Flynn told it that way. And I loved kind of seeing it all come together at the very end. That was really excellently done. The other thing I would say is this wasn't particularly a fun read. This plot is very gruesome. This wasn't something that I was dying to pick up and read. Um, it was definitely a little bit more of a struggle to find the motivation to pick it up and read it because it was so dark, dark places. So um, if you don't like your thrillers really like gritty and dark and gruesome, this may not be the book for you because it's definitely not like while it's very entertaining, um, it's not fun. <laughs> it's definitely not one of those books that you use to escape the real world. It's very much um, a depressing story that doesn't make you feel good. It makes you feel like you need to shower at the end of it. So that's something to keep in mind if you're considering reading this one. What I want to talk about is characters because this is probably where Jillian Flynn 
makes me the most conflicted and it's because her characters are extremely well written but they're so unlikable and so let me explain so i've only read two jillian flynn books and that's sharp objects first and now dark places and both of them had a main female character who is deeply damaged and flawed and has a lot of stuff going on in their head. And while it's fascinating to read about, it doesn't make them particularly likable. And especially with Libby, how, you know, we would have these moments where she would talk about kind of exploiting the murders of her family to gain money and to gain um, like notoriety. And so, you know, we would have these moments where she would talk about another child who had been murdered and being resentful because that was taking away attention from her. So it was like, how do you root for somebody whose headspace sounds like that? Um, so even though you can sympathize with her and you understand her circumstances that led her to think like that, it's not particularly likable when you're reading about them and following them. Um, so uh, characters are really a tough one for me with Jillian Flynn books. And so I would say that because the characters are so well written, I would give the characters maybe like a four out of five for this book, but I didn't particularly love that. The other supporting characters that we have in this book are also pretty fascinating. I would say my favorite character in this book was probably the mother um, of Libby. She had a lot of stuff going on, but she displayed an immense amount of strength um, throughout the book. Um, the brother was also not very likable at all. Um, he was really a tough one to root for. And again, I think it's just because the way Jillian Flynn writes those characters, even though it's very intriguing and fascinating to get in the headspace of someone like that, it's not something that is fun to do. <laughs> um, and then we've also got the, the father figure in this book, um, Libby's father, who is extremely irredeemable. Um, so it's a really interesting cast of characters and seeing them all interact together. Again, all of them were extremely well written, just not something that was necessarily fun to read. <laughs> so overall, I gave this book a 3.5 out of 5 stars. It was really tough to come up with that rating because, again, the writing is like a 4 out of 5 and the whole twist at the end is like, four out of five, but then you have just the experience of reading this that kind of dragged it down for me. It was just so dark and um, I like my books to be an escape. I like feeling like I'm excited to pick it up and see where we're going next. And with this one, it was more of a dread where you knew what was coming and it was like, do I want to get there? Like, do I? Hopefully this helps you decide whether or not to pick this one up. If you enjoy your thrillers, very dark, very gritty, very gruesome, kind of scary, <laughs> then I would recommend this one if you like them a little bit more of a slow burn. And if you like more of that character study type of thriller, I'd recommend Dark Places. If you don't, if you like a fast paced thriller that you know, gives you lots of twists and turns and is really like fun to kind of discover all of the little secrets. Um, this one might not be for you because again, it's just so dark. So that's my quick review of Dark Places by Jillian Flynn. If you've read it before, what did you think of this book? Did you like it? Do you like other Jillian Flynn books? Um, I'm trying to get through all of her books and it's proving pretty difficult because they are just so much to handle. Ooh. So anyways, I hope you enjoyed this review. If you enjoyed it, make sure to like this video and subscribe. I release new videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And until next time, bye.